Hey guys, Matt here from the Traveling Together Journal coming at you with another camper build video and today we're going to be working on our subframe. In previous videos you've seen that we plan to build our subframe out of 1 by 2 inch rectangular steel tubing and mount this subframe directly to the truck frame. So we have removed the stock bed and rear bumper and have leveled the truck off on jack stands so that we have a stable level base to work on. After a trip to the local steel yard for materials, it was back to the shop to get to work. So we used our cheap Harbor Freight chop saw and cut all the steel to the lengths that we need it to be. And then we'll be cleaning up the ends where we're going to be welding them together. We're going to be using an Eastwood MIG 175 and we are using an Argon carbon dioxide mix 7525 which is pretty standard and we are using a spool of 0 .030 MIG wire and we'll be welding on 8th inch and 16 gauge steel so we just get to use the little chart up here the 7525 gas 0.030 wire Come across the chart, 16 gauge, they suggest a C5, and 1 8th, they suggest an E6. So depending on the thickness I'm welding at the time, I'll be switching back and forth between those settings. And you can easily set them over here. So 8th inch I think was E and 6 and what I'm adjusting there is the arc volts and the wire speed. Okay before we get going I gotta say I'm not a welder. I am just beginning, I'm learning and I'm willing to give this a go because the MIG welder and the auto dim helmet and stuff is making me feel a lot more comfortable and confident in my welds than years ago when I tried to learn how to arc weld. Uh, that process I couldn't seem to pick up with any confidence. Um, but this, my welds don't look pretty, but I feel like I can make things stick together. We've got our first welds set up, squared off. I'm trying out these new clamp things I bought on Amazon. So far I'm liking them for this purpose. They do a good job of easily getting you to a 90 degree angle. And we're gonna start with just getting some tacks to hold our pieces together. And then we'll move the tacked together frame around in order to get the easiest possible weld angles on each piece. And we'll be welding all the way around each seam. All right, we got the center ladder all welded up. Now I need to level it off and make the mounts. So I've got a bunch of washers that we just had laying around. I'm gonna use those as spacers underneath the frame and then clamp it in place. I got all my pieces of 3 16 inch by 2 inch flat bar cut to make the forward mount and I'm going to go over to the truck and clamp everything in place and tack it together then pull it back off the truck to fully weld the inside of everything. Since I'm putting so much heat into a relatively small piece of metal I'm taking breaks and during my breaks I'm working on the center mounts. So we got our pieces cut for the center mounts and just like the front mounts we are now going to tack them while they are in place on the truck and then we'll remove them, fully weld them on the bench and then bring them back over here to put in place again. Alright so I have my forward mounts and my middle mounts done and I've welded the easily accessible portions of those onto the subframe 
So hopefully that means I won't need the clamps anymore. So I can clear those out of the way and start working on the aft mount. Aft mounts welded up and ready to be put in place, tacked onto the subframe. All right, we've got the easily accessible parts of the aft mount welded together. And just like the other mounts, I'm waiting to finish welding it on until I get the rest of the subframe put together. And that way I can pull the whole thing off flip it over and gain access to all the more difficult spots. Now we're putting together the sections that are going to go on the outside of the frame rail and sort of frame out where the wheel well will be. I used some creative clamping and regularly checked the level to make sure I was getting these sections put on straight. All right, use the angle grinder to round off the corners on the back of the subframe here. Hi Taz, playing fetch. And then I've got these uh, one inch flat bar pieces that I'll weld into place and bend around so that the corners on the subframe will match the one inch radius that I plan on putting on the camper. All right, so we got all the work done that we're gonna get done with the subframe bolted in place. So we're gonna be taking it off the truck and maneuvering it around so that I can get some more welds on there. Then hopefully today I'll also be getting to all these welds on the top of the subframe that need to be grinded down so that the camper can sit flush to all the subframe tubing. Well, I finished grinding down all the welds on top of the subframe so I'll have a nice smooth surface to adhere the camper to. And before I put it back on the truck, I weighed it, and the subframe comes in at 97 pounds. Well, I got the truck moved back over here out of the way because I'm gonna have to take a couple weeks off from working on the project. So get it out of my parents' way, let them use their backyard parking spot again. But before they move their truck in, I'm gonna get a little session in on the half pipe. All right, the plan for today is to weld these tabs onto the subframe. We're going to have 10 of them, and those are going to be the mounts to hold the camper onto the subframe. Grind it off the corner on each tab to make it around the welds on the subframe. Rigged up a little clamp action and rolled out the welder, so ready to spark it up. So we got all of our tabs tacked in place and now we just need to pull the subframe off so I can do all the welding underneath. We got our tabs all welded on. So we've been keeping the subframe coated in oil to keep it from rusting but now that I want to paint the primer on it we've got to clean that off. So our first step is going to be to use some degreaser and just wipe as much of the oil and stuff off as we can with that. All right, subframe's all cleaned off, degreased. So next step, sandpaper. Uh, the company that makes the primer that I'm gonna use recommends doing a rough sand of 80 grit in order to put tooth on the metal so that the primer can better adhere to it. Next, we're gonna be using the petite brushing thinner and a clean rag to wipe everything down one last time. So we've got our Pettit Rustlock 6980. We're just gonna be putting that on with a two inch chip brush and trying to get as much coverage all at once as I can. That's why I've got it up on these blocks here. And it has a half hour dry time at 90 degrees Fahrenheit, which means I'll probably be able to pretty much paint in circles so by the time I finish painting the first coat, I'll probably be pretty close to going back to where I started and doing another coat. 
And there you have it. Our steel subframe is primed and ready to go. And now we just need to build a camper.